we're going to have a look at the way in which we can represent sound waves. Let's have a look, first of all, at an imaginary scene in which we've got particles here where there's no sound going through them. Then imagine we take a photograph of those particles when the sound is actually traveling through them, but we've just got them in one instant, one point in time. What you can see, of course, is that the particles have moved and they do move. They move backwards and forwards, as we know. Let's have a closer look at the way in which those particles are moving. Here we've got these position, these particles in their equilibrium or rest position. Now you can see that as the wave is going through, we might have one uh, particular particle that's moved backwards a little bit. Uh -huh. And here, particle three, as the wave has gone through, at this moment when we've taken this photograph of it, we've got three moving backwards even further. Four here yeah, has moved backwards, but not quite as far. Five is still in its rest position at this moment. Six has moved forward. Six, seven has moved forward quite a bit. Eight, not quite as much. And nine is still in its, well, is in its rest position at this moment. 10, again, now has moved back, that particle. And at this stage, 11 has moved back a fair distance, 12, a little distance, 13 is in its rest position, and so on. So this is how we can uh, see these particles. Now, if we go <clears throat> and represent this in a slightly different way, this diagram is showing that 2 has moved back that distance. 3 has moved back that distance there a little further as the wave goes through. Number four has moved back there. Number five has not moved there at all. So here we've got a, a rarefaction, as you can see, and here we've got a compression. Here we've got another rarefaction. Here we've got a compression. So those compressions and rarefactions move through the medium as the sound goes through. What we can do then is get some measurements. Here, two has moved back 10 millimetres, let's say. So we've got minus 10 to say that it's moved backwards. Minus 18 moved backwards even further. Minus 10, just a little way. And zero, this one is still in its rest position. And so on here, we've got 10. Let's move forward 10 here. 18 millimetres, 10, 0, and so on. What we can then do, as I said, is graph these. Uh, we can illustrate them by showing down here, for example, uh, 10 millimetres, 18 millimetres, 10 millimetres, 0, and so on. So if we have a look at the next slide, what we've got there is a sine wave. We can represent the displacement of these particles using a sine wave. And this is how it, it can be done much more easily to, to demonstrate what a, even a sound wave is like. Very often we like to represent it as a transverse or looking like a transverse wave. We're really looking at, in this particular case, at the displacement. Another way in which we can get a sine curve to illustrate the uh, movement of a sound wave is by having a look at the pressure. And we get a slightly different uh, wave there, slightly different phase. If we have a look at pressure here, for example, in the case of a compression, the pressure is higher. So we might have a crest here that corresponds to a compression. We might have a trough here that corresponds to a rarefaction. But certainly in representing sound uh, as a wave, it's much, much easier to do that as a sine wave rather than a whole series of dots, which can be a little bit confusing.